So AOC says inflation, claims of inflation are propaganda. Um, what's really interesting, and I didn't even, I've never even, I, I, I've never seen this chart before I wrote this article, which is really, which is really crazy. But, um, so Alexia, New York representative, elect Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Um, she posted a video on her Instagram account from a, what is it, New Zealand left-wing organization that said inflation is propaganda and that greedy shareholders are the reason that prices have been high. So let's talk about this for a second. I mean, her district was not having any of it. Like, people in her district are like, is she crazy? Has she been to the grocery store lately? One person, like, just zinger right here. Um, I think this person, 60, 61 years old, said, you can't put this all on big companies. Prices went up then, and they've stayed high. I think it was just an excuse to make us spend more money talking about the pandemic as a whole. Um, another said, <laughs> and for her to act as if inflation being something other than the government's fault, well, since I don't have someone to pay for my $30,000 dress for a gala like she did, it's much easier for me to see the truth. These are her people in her district. Let's just talk about that. These are people in her district because they're talking, I mean, and that's talking about her Met Gala dress that said tax the rich, which cost $30,000, which is really interesting, right? She can, like, somebody's going to pay for her $30,000 dress for her that says tax the rich. Well, her constituents of hers are drowning in inflation um basically people are saying like she should get out here and talk to the people and see how bad it's gotten like she's now living up in her ivory tower and not really seeing what's going on um the uh the, the instagram story from the basically said Propaganda around inflation and cost of living is so powerful that we've forgotten the very basic fact that corporations set the prices of their product. If a corporation raises its prices, then it makes record profits. That's not some invincible monster. That is just a bunch of greedy shareholders. Let's talk about basic economics. Now, if you don't know... I do have a degree. I do have a business degree. It's not in economics, but I did have to take some economics courses. Okay. So my degree is in logistics management and marketing. But what I will tell you, the most memorable thing from my economics course that I ever learned is something called the multiplier effect. Um, and basically what the multiplier effect says is when you raise the price on any given item that price reverberates through the supply chain and causes the end product to cost more so for example um i can go back to the cost of fuel Let's talk about what we've been dealing with with fuel for a while. Fuel prices go up because of supply chain issues, because the Department of um, Transportation has had issues delivering fuel. We've had fuel issues because we got off of the American First model when it comes to fuel. Um, we started buying from the Middle East again, and... Fuel is one thing that does not, and actually this is what's interesting, is the, the administration this week has decided to end claims to fuel, oper like claims of land 
to drill fuel. So they've ended these uh, permits, right? All that does, the price of fuel goes up because of futures. So Saudi Arabia will raise prices on their oil futures because they know that in the future, we won't be able to drill because we just ended these land claims. Okay, so we are now beholden to their prices. Um, and so our prices are going to continue to go up in terms of fuel. So expect ten dollars expect ten dollars in gas here pretty soon. But the basics are for one, as the government begins to print more money to pay off our debt, um, because we have such substantial debt, what 31, 32 trillion dollars in debt right now. That puts more money into the market, meaning that our money is now worth less. That's the first thing when it comes to inflation. Our money is not worth as much because it's not back to anything, and there's so much of it in the market, it's worth less. It's basic supply and demand in that regard when it comes to our money. Now, talk about a now talk about fuel, right? Gas prices go from $2 a gallon to $5 a gallon in the last couple of years. So now logistics cost, say it used to cost $5,000 to transport, you know, a bushel of goods um, or a bushel of parts that a manufacturing plant needed. So let's just go from the basics. So one organization produces, you know, goods, like the basic model. So think about a car. So one manufacturer, say it's the door hinges, just for example, door hinges. They produce the door hinges that go into the final product of a car. They produce those door hinges. It gets on a truck. It goes to the manufacturing plant. Well, because of this item, because of the cost that it, you know, all the raw material that they need to create those door hinges need to be transported there. So $10 in gas, $10, $10 a gallon in gas. That adds up. That increases the prices. So the manufacturer of door hinges has to increase their prices be in order to make their own profit because their profits are going to dwindle based on logistics costs. Transport those door hinges over to, say, GM, and they put them on a car. But to transport them, that fuel cost has now gone up too. So now GM goes, well, now this widget, not only does it cost me five cents more per widget to, you know, buy the item. Now logistics costs also cost me, you know, $10 per shipment more. So now I per car have to raise prices to in order to do this. Now, think about all the widgets that it it takes to create a final product of a car. And that is why prices go up. The multiplier effect starts at the very 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 very, very beginning of manufacturing and all those increased added costs along the way, whether it's you know, it, it, the all those increased costs bring that up. We can even go with food costs right? Take away all the interest intricacies of manufacturing a car. And you say, this item, this tomato, this tomato comes from a farm, right? Gets transported to a plant. Now where it gets packaged up to deliver to suppliers in a refrigerated truck. So there's two different sets of increased costs there because of transportation costs. Like again, having a degree in logistics, transportation costs to me are huge because every area where a item needs to go, the transportation costs going up is affected. 
um, as a supply chain manager, I, you know, you have, you have, they look at what is your cost? Like how much are you spending per item to bring like per widget to come in? And how much does the final, like how much we, we, we create what are called bills of material. So in order to create this widget as our final product, we create a complete bill of material of everything that we need to bring in that creates that item. And then you say, what does each thing cost? Are we get? then we put a, you know, 10% markup. You put, you know, how much does it cost to cr- like, just to purchase the product, how much are the logistics costs, like the the uh, the shipping costs to get those items to you for one item, and then add like a ten percent markup just so you can make a little bit of profit, and that is what your that is usually what your what your standard product costs are. Like that's what you're going to sell it for. Um, and so to say that. It's just greedy corporations and not understanding how even the basics of supply chain and the, you know, the the market work. And again, just go look up the multiplier effect. Like once you have a little bit of increase in in stuff in uh, price of one item, it increases the price of everything. Um, so it's not just greedy corporations and greedy shareholders. It's it's completely insane to even think so. Like if you like if you think that it's because of fuel cost, um, then then you're insane. Now I I do want to point out this um, this chart here. This is actually a chart from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics that have shown like the inflation rates over the years. I was actually kind of dumbfounded by this, to be quite honest, because literally before 2020, actually before 2021, the times that inflation even hit above 3%, just looking real quick, it's maybe here in 2011, again, Obama administration, election year time frame. Um, actually, but in 2009, they had a, a negative uh, deflation rate, which was actually kind of crazy, but that was also after we had crazy inflation in 2008 when we had like the market sales sell offs and everything like that. So, this was a crazy time frame right here. I thought this was crazy time frame because remember, I graduated college in 2009, um, and in 2008, everything was going crazy, especially in the housing market. That's the only time I mean, in the average, was 3.8 percent in terms of uh, inflation. Right. But every other year, like inflation never went above really 3%. 2011, that was about it. Never went, never went above 4%, except for like right here in 2005. That's about it. 4% was very, very unlikely. Now, 2020, I mean, it's 1% through almost one and two, like, one two percent during almost all the Trump years until about yeah even through 2020. Look at look at these numbers through 2020. Then you hit 2021. January is good, February is good, March is good, and then April. Holy fuck, four percent. Like that's wow. Think about this. Four percent in April. Five percent May, and it just kept going up in 2021. What's the difference? Joe Biden was elected in 2020. It was in January 2021. Joe Biden took office. So from the point that he took office, these numbers went up and up and up and up. 2022, we were hitting record numbers. Every single month. At least unprecedented numbers. I don't know if they were actually records based on like when, you know, the Great Depression and stuff like that. But every single month they were hitting record numbers. And a lot of that goes back to fuel costs like we were talking about before. 
even in Jan and then it started to come down right here. So November and then December dropped down a little bit. January dropped. So it started to drop again as we hit July and August. Now, gas prices really haven't gone down. Gas prices are about where they were, at least here in Georgia. But our state cut the gas tax for this whole thing, too. But a lot of that tied to that. But I just want to point that out. Because this is going to be a big sticking point in the next election, I think. Like, people remember this stuff. and But now it's starting to come into an election year. We're going to drop back down. We're going to do this. But now that, the, now that they have... Uh, the president has cut these oil leases. I'm want, I'm waiting to see what happens with fuel prices to go back up. I think it's going to go back up. Again, I am not a not an expert on this stuff, but it would seem like they would continue to go up, right? But yes, inflation is a hoax. It's all propaganda. Even though the Department of Labor, B Bureau of Labor and Statistics are the ones that are putting this out there. Inflation is a hoax, ladies and gentlemen.